There are many things that get in the way of self-love. And for us women, unfortunately, we have so many hurdles to jump over in this society. And there are common barriers to self-love that get in the way of us having a great relationship with ourselves. So today on this video, I'm going to talk about five barriers to self-love and how you can overcome them. Before we get started, my name's Tawana T. I am an author of a book called Paint Yourself Beautiful, and I am a self-love guide. I'm just here to pass the torch to you so that you can find your way back to you. Here on my YouTube channel, I talk about self-love, I talk about self-care, and I talk about how to build the most important relationship you will ever have in your life, and that is with yourself. So let's get started. When it comes to self-love, it doesn't take many of us long to lose our way where our self-perception gets kind of screwed up. Growing up with lessons in life, our wrongness gets pointed out by one person or another or one situation or another, or two, <laughs> depending on who you are. And a lot of times we carry those things into adulthood and we struggle to overcome, feel alone. We all have some issues that we have to overcome. But the first step in overcoming anything is to first determine what is it that I'm dealing with so that you can make the best choice for you. So these are not in any particular order, but the first one is, how do you talk to yourself? First barrier we'll deal with is your toxic self-talk real or imagined. The theme songs we play in our head can be powerful. They can be uplifting or just downright detrimental to our well-being. If you're walking around all day talking crap to yourself and putting yourself down, how can you be, enjoy, or hear love, especially of yourself? So it's important to listen to your self-talk and determine what situations do you find yourself in when you are being cruel it's to yourself. It's important to listen to your self-talk or how you talk to yourself in various situations, such as when you make a mistake, when you feel bad or when you feel sad, or when you achieve something, or just if you're by yourself with your private thoughts. One thing I'll ask you is to listen to the voice. Whose voice is it? Is it a parent? Is it a teacher? Is it a significant other? A friend? A sibling? How about the kid from the third grade who pulled your ponytail? Part of letting go is distinguishing whose voice you're listening to and working through those messages. When your critical voice starts getting out of control, I'm gonna ask you just to shift your focus to encouragement and appreciation. I'm not gonna say totally rebuke it because it's actually a survival mechanism and is there to protect us. And sometimes you may have to actually investigate what it's saying and not completely run away. But that's another video as to why you may need to investigate it. So on to number two. Number two is not believing that you are worthy or deserving of love. Now I know one's, no one's walking around saying, I don't deserve love, I don't think I'm worthy. And it, it's, it's subtle things that you say and do. And you may be feeling so bad about yourself and so unworthy that you don't even believe that you deserve it. Sometimes it's just holding on to past mistakes or you're judging yourself really harshly or you have a lot of regrets that you haven't let go. And just that alone has you feeling like you don't deserve it or you can't accept it when it appears you don't believe it. So you doubt it and you get into this behavior of self-sabotage because deep down inside, you don't think you deserve it. So what's the point? He's gonna leave anyway. 
no one ever stays, nothing ever works out, those types of things. So even if you wanted love, it's hard for you to accept love because it feels really uncomfortable and scary. And that scariness subconsciously makes you self-sabotage. And there are so many ways to tell ourselves that we're not good enough. And this mindset literally has you feeling like an imposter in your own life because consciously you'll say, I love myself, I deserve this. But then deep down inside, you second guess, you doubt yourself, you don't trust yourself. So then what shows up in your life is not congruent with what you say. And that's because deep down inside, you really don't feel like you're worthy. So accepting that you deserve everything in life that is good and that is great is the pinnacle of self-love. So learn how to, learning how to trust yourself, trusting your inner wisdom, your intuition is a way for you to honor and affirm that, hey, yes, I do deserve this. So number three is perfectionism. Not allowing yourself to fail keeps you trapped in being perfect and, or the illusion of being perfect because we know that no one is perfect. And let me reiterate, no one is perfect. And even though we can say that consciously, on a subconscious level, we all try to be perfect. We want to be the perfect mom, the perfect daughter, the perfect friend, the perfect sister, the perfect child. We want the perfect life. And oh my God, you will exhaust yourself. Give yourself the learning experience and vulnerability that comes with making mistakes. And remember that when you fail, it's good for the soul and it helps build a strong character. And think about what made you stronger. It wasn't the things that came easy. It was the things you had to overcome and the things you struggled with. But if you're never willing to take a risk because you might fail, then you'll never know what you're truly made of and it keeps you small in the world. What I had to learn was to let go of critical judgment of other people because what I would do is turn that critical judgment in on myself and judge myself just as harshly. More important, when I learned to accept the humanness of other people that people just make mistakes, I was more able to accept the humanness of myself. The fourth self-love barrier I like to talk about is body shame. I don't care who you are, how good you may look to someone or how perfect someone's body may seem, we all have hangups, especially about our body. And these minor annoyances can come and go. However, when these thoughts become pervasive or intrusive or it's your main focus, it can actually cause you to hate your physical self, which prevents you from having inner self-love. Even if we want to change something about our body, we can still love so it. So take care of yourself. Get enough rest. Eat the proper foods that nourishes not only your body, but your mind. Exercise. You'd be amazed at how good you can feel when you treat yourself like you matter. The next barrier to self-love I wanna talk about is the inability to accept love. When you haven't been loved in a healthy way, it's hard to even know what love is like. It's difficult to experience, recognize, or even understand what healthy love is. If the way you were loved stems from violence, negativity, put downs, or abuse, it's extremely hard to even know how to find love 
within yourself. Our family and our loved ones were the ones responsible for teaching us how to love ourselves. But if they weren't the best examples or poor examples of how to love themselves because they hadn't been taught what healthy love is, then the likelihood is that we picked up on the same habits. Likewise, most of us have learned that love was something that you gave and received from another person. And we've been programmed, socialized, and conditioned to think that if we love ourselves or pay attention to ourselves, that we're either self-centered, we're conceited, or we're even selfish. Consideration or even taking a compliment makes most people uncomfortable. Try giving five people a compliment and see how they react. It really makes people uncomfortable. So what I want you to get used to is paying attention to and appreciating yourself. When you wake up, I want you to do this one thing. Start writing down three things that you like about yourself and appreciate about yourself. This way you can start getting in tune with you and stop looking outside of yourself for the jewels that God placed in each and every one of us. And when you can find within what you've been searching for outside of you, then you can grow in love with yourself and then attract that love to you. I pray that you learned something on this video that can be beneficial to your life so you can evaluate your current circumstances and see if there are some adjustments that can be made to help you grow more in love with this yourself. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, welcome and subscribe and hit the notification bell so when I upload a video, you'll be the first to know. And if you are returning, thank you so much and I appreciate your presence. Also, check out the links below. There's a self-love quiz, as well as my, you can grab a copy of my book, Paint Yourself Beautiful. Join my Facebook community, where it's a, a community of women who encourage and support each other at, through their journey to self-love. That's all for now, and again, thank you for joining me.